right. So towards the end of the lab, you would have read in your manual that you're going to perform a simple distillation to purify your clove oil product. Instead, we're actually going to be using our rotary evaporator, or rotovap, to boil off your solvent. This is mainly comprised of three components. You have your cooler, or your chiller, over here that gets the temperatures low enough to where it needs to be to induce the condensation of the solvent you're trying to boil off. Then you have your vacuum down here, which is actually doing the pulling and creating the vacuum inside the apparatus. And then all of this is the glassware that connects to the rotary evaporator. All right? So, ideally when you come to lab, everything will already be turned on, but just in case if you happen to be the first person over here and it's not turned on, I'll show sure you how to turn it on. For the chiller, turn on the power button and you wait until it says standby, S-T-B-Y. And then when it comes on, press select, wait a second, and it will start on its own. And then it will start cooling. Now you have to give it some time. This is the degrees in Celsius on the inside of this fluid, the coolant that's pumping around. So at 22 degrees, uh, 23 degrees Celsius, that's room temperature. It's not super efficient at the moment. So you have to let it cool a little bit longer. This is why it's probably going to be on when you get in the lab. For the vacuum, the power button is on the side right next to the power cord. Then all you would do is turn it on by pressing the on button. And we'll come back in just a second. Now over here, to turn on all of this stuff, there are two different power buttons. The one over here, right to the side at the bottom of the, whatever you'd like to call this, this little interaction, is how you turn on all of this stuff. Now sometimes, if this is already on, the screen may be off. And so you'll see like this light on down here. All you have to do is just press it again to get it to come back on. Now, as the name suggests, there's some rotation involved, and so you have two things here. Just like a simple distillation, you'll have some kind of heating mantle down here, and then you'll boil your stuff off the top. These two dials control two different aspects. The left one that's white controls the rotation speed, and it'll tell you in revolutions per minute, which you can change yourself. And then the same thing is the bath temperature over here, or how hot you'd be making your sand bath, you can change it, and it's the orange dial. You can make it like funny, because it's orange. Now, to actually turn these on, you need to press the button, and it will start heating. In this case, I pressed the on button for the bath temp. So now it's starting to heat to whatever the set, the set value is. So in this case, I set it to 80, it's going to heat to 80. And so I press it again, and it'll turn it off. Same thing for the rotation. Let's say I set it to, I don't know, 45, and then press the button. This will rotate after just a second at the speed you set it at. And of course, you can change the rotation speed however you see fit afterwards, and then press it to turn it off. Now, let's go ahead, I'm gonna turn this back on just for the sake, and then start. So this would be as if I were coming in here and doing this myself. I turn on the cooler, I turn on the vacuum, and then normally I wouldn't have anything over here on the outside. So this is your bump trap. You have to have that whenever you're working with stuff that needs to be evaporated. This will keep stuff from flying up into the condensing column on the left side in the case something bumps. You're rotating the stuff on the inside and turning it over so that you don't accidentally form your nucleation site. This is the equivalent of adding a boiling tip to the stuff you're trying to boil off. Just by rotating, you're keeping it, you're keeping it from trying to boil away. It causes spontaneous formations of bubbles in the bottom. So, in this case, I set up the bump trap, make sure that all the gauges match the right size, and now I'm going to put this on and get it ready to go. Using a tech clip, everything is secured. This end is a 1420, so it's bigger, it requires a larger tech clamp, and this end is a even smaller, so it requires a smaller of the two. Now, so this is ready to go. It's trying to pull a vacuum. This up here is your pressure gauge. This is the pressure on the inside of the apparatus. If you remember, on the outside, pressure is approximately equal to one bar, or 100, 1,000, 325 pascals. And this is the pressure on the inside of the apparatus, and you can control how fast this goes up or down, or what it stays at, by modulating this right here. This will open and close the valve to change the pressure on the inside. So in this case, I open it up to maximum, and it's sitting at about 850 milliwatts. And so I can control it the other way, and you hear this start to struggle, it's now pulling pressure lower as it's trying to pull the stuff off on the inside. So now we're down to 300, 200, 100 millibars, and it'll keep going lower as necessary. So let's suppose that I have just put my stuff on the apparatus. I've got it all from here. This is where my stuff is. I will use this push button on the bottom to control how high this is. Let's say it's a little high for my liking. Let's move it down a little bit more. And now I can just move the bucket of water, or a hot bath, over to where it needs to go. It is just easy come, easy go, but be careful, see I'm spilling it. And then push it down even further so that it sits in the water, just 
as if you were wanting stuff off in a sand bath. So all I'm doing is setting the bottom of it right into the water, just like so. And you can see it's about halfway covered. So much so that it's not touching any of the outer walls or anything that could possibly damage the apparatus. And so now that I've got it in the water, let's say that it's heating, now it is heating. And now I start the rotation. So you start the heat and then the rotation. Let's turn it up and say, I don't know, 100 revolutions per minute. And that's how it starts. Now, after the rotation is started and the heat has started, now I can start pulling the vacuum. This is where you have to start watching. You have to watch very closely because even though it rotates and it keeps it from bumping, it still can. If it evaporates too quickly and that solvent tries to come off too fast, you could end up producing those bubbles even while you're rotating and you can still cause it to bump. It's the need for a, a bump truck. So let's say I start pulling a vacuum just a little bit. And I can hear it start to struggle. I'm watching the needle as it goes down, but I'm also keeping an eye on the solvent in the bottom so that it doesn't go too far. And I will slowly decrease the pressure while keeping an eye on the solvent inside the pot to make sure that it doesn't start bubbling too quickly. And I will continue doing this as I see fit. The further along it goes, the harder I may need to make the vacuum, the lower the pressure may need to be. And I will do this until I'm finished. And once it's done, I just open the valve back up Get the air escaping. All the way back up to where it needs to be. And then I'll turn the vacuum off. Now, in the same way that we made sure that you didn't take off the clamp too fast when you were doing one of these vacuum filtrations earlier, remember if you took it off too fast, your product could jump up out and out of nowhere whenever the pressure changes too quick. This is, uses the same principle. You let the pressure slowly increase so that there's no drastic change and cause its own form of bumping. You let it get to atmospheric pressure almost, and then you cut off the valve. It's the same thing as slowly letting off the release valve on your vacuum filtrations. So let's see, I've got this done. Now I can go ahead and lift this up out of the bath using the push valve, and I will turn the rotation off. And then once it's done, I can disassemble and carry on whatever I need to do. Once I'm done, if you happen to be the last person in here that's using this, after you've cleaned up your apparatus, cleaned up your bunk trap, whatever needs to be done, Turn off all of this over here, just by this button over here to the left side of the panel. This should be off by the time you're done with what you're doing. And then you'll also fill the chiller. And so now all of this is done and you're good to go.